Adobe Illustrator is a great way to make a logo or pattern which you can put into other projects such as Photoshop or InDesign. Now there are quite a lot of features that you can master and it can be a bit off-putting when you first look at it as this large program but there are some very basic elements that you can use regularly and make some very effective designs without actually knowing that much. So what we're going to do here is create a very simple sort of artistic piece. And here is one I made earlier, which is just a few sort of lines and circles. There's nothing particularly complex here, although it's quite attractive. Now the thing to remember is with any kind of design, you actually are doing design. It's not doing pick up the computer and do stuff. So I recommend that you do your research, you decide what you want to achieve, and by what you want to achieve, I believe that it's essential that you consider the emotional um, feelings you're trying to convey. So you do that, and then you sketch initial ideas out with a pencil on paper, go through different things, try different bits, and just keep going until you finally get to the end stage where you've produced a design which you think is what you need. You then take this design and create it in Illustrator. Anyhow, we're going to produce this design here, and I'm going to pop it to the other screen here. So if I start looking to the side, it's because I'm looking at that. So the first thing you want to do with Illustrator is create a new document. So we're going to call this Sketch. Now, there's different kind of profiles you've got here. So, for example, if you're for devices, you can create for an iPad screen or an iPhone screen. Or, or if it's for print, you've got page sizes. So that's kind of useful. Um, I'm going to click on A4 just because it's there. Um, you can, I'm going to have landscape, and you can set you know, the bleeds of the paper. You can have custom sizes. You can do a lot of things. Don't worry about the advanced colour thing too much, although it's good to keep the, the raster effect on the high 300 ppi. Basically it means that if you start at a higher resolution, you'll get a high quality image. You can also take that image down to a lower quality later on if you need to, but if you start at a screen resolution and you're putting out 72 dpi, which is uh, it's not very good. Anyway, let's get started on this piece. So we have a paper here. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this design onto the screen here just so we can sort of have something to work towards and you can see how I'm building it up. So the first feature we have here is this big circle. So on the left here, like all the daily products, I have my palette and there's a whole load of different tools I can choose. So here we have the rectangle tool selected. And if I was just draw something else, it draws a rectangle. And I just um, undid that with Control Z. Um, same commands on Windows. If I hold down the left mouse button, I can select which tool I like. So I actually want a ellipse. Okay. Now with my with that selected on the screen here, I can just draw out shapes like cigar shapes, but if I hold down shift, I get a perfect circle, which is what I want. So I've done that, and if I just select click out there, it currently doesn't look very much like the circle at the top, it's just, you know, very basic. So what I need to do is click here, the variable width profile. So this circle you see starts there, then goes fat, goes thin again. So, with this selected, I'm going to choose that profile. And I can increase the stroke. And you start to see it comes up. So, with a stroke of one point, you haven't got much scope to get bigger at all. But with um, a larger point, you can actually do this. Now, I think that's, I'm going to make it a bit smaller. It's a bit too much. Mm. That's six points okay for me. We're not doing exact application anyway. So we've got that. Now, another thing you can do is when you're creating logos, you can play with things. So it's completely fine if you just look at these other profiles and see, does that look more like 
the thing I wanted, wanted to look like. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. So feel free to experiment. Actually, I quite like the look of that. It's a bit more sleek than the initial one, which is there. So I'm going to stick with that. You know, when you're playing with CAD, you can change your mind in the building stage because quite a lot of time you do something you didn't intend to do and it looks really good. Anyhow, uh, another tool we've got here is the brush definition. Now, I'm going to draw a line and show you just very quickly. Um, make this into a nice thick line. This is like what you're painting with, which you're drawing with. So the basic is just your straight line. You're getting nothing special. It is, in every sense, a line. If I select this and if drop down, we have these different shapes. So if we have you know, the oval, it's like drawing with an oval piece. If we take the, um, what's it called there? A slanted oval, you get a different bit. Now on the straights, you only see a big difference, but if we select the circle, put it back to uniform, and you can start to see it does change definition. Anyhow, um, to undo that. In this case, we're not going to actually change much, but you can do some really fun things. So if you look at here, that one, which is charcoal, it looks like you've drawn that in charcoal, which is kind of fun. And if I select the circle and say charcoal, the look and feel of that's completely different now. So that's a really cool thing to do. Um, you can obviously create new brushes, you know, like an art brush, and you can define things and you can load them. But for basic work, it's completely fine to, to use just the stock ones. Um, other looks, you've got these kind of pattern cutting esque ones. You've got these sort of weird, blurry lines, really cool. Um, and like anything in um, in Photoshop or in Design or Illustrator, you can the more you learn to play with these tools, the better you can become at using them. And you can't start combining them, layering them, and you can do some really good things. But today, I'm not going to worry about that. Anyhow, so those that's introducing drawing a circle and these basic shapes. There are other things to do, such as opacity. So if I spring this down to, let's say, 30, make it partly see-through, um, or whatever value you like, I'm keeping it solid black. Um, don't worry about style. I mean, if we select this and drop down the style, you see that you're dropping a sort of template yeah, into there, which is really useful if you're doing something like a silhouette, and you want to say I've got this um, uh, pattern I want to put into this um, shirt, but we're not going to do that today. We're not worrying about that. So that's another day. Just making you aware aware of what this is. Um, Recoloring artwork. Don't, don't worry. The, if you want to do color, these two, the top left, are the most important ones. So, if we look at this one, this is the outside. So we can make it a pink. We can make it a black or yellow or any color we like. I'm going to stick with black. Second one here is the fill. So what's inside? So if I say red, everything inside the circle turns red. Now you see from the picture above, we have transparencies. But there's nothing in the middle. So I'm just going to select empty. Now you can't see it right now, but in a minute you will. So let's go and draw a line, um, and I want to do this line across. And you see that we actually have one line from there and another line there, so it's like two lines. Now, as I move my cursor on the uh, sketch, you'll see these inferences appear, which means my cursor is snapping to this point. So anywhere around here, it'll be exactly in line with the center of the circle, which is what you want. So my first one goes from about there. Oops. I draw a line, I just drag it out to about there. And you'll see it's got some, yeah, so it's like a, it's like a point. So it's starting off thick and thin. So we'll put some points there. We put um, 
put a variable width and keep it basic. So that is that. Now if I tick circle and I was to add say white in there as it originally was, it's still fine because that is um, in front of the circle. If I now take this on the layer and drag it to the bottom, you'll see that it's disappeared because it's now behind. I make the transparent and you can see them again. Right. So, by the way, these, this layer menu, if you can't find it, you can just go Windows, Layers, or use F7. So, um, the layering techniques are the same as in Photoshop and in Design. So, you can have sort of big layers, which you can rename as objects. You can have ones named as text or whatever. Anyhow, so let's go get back onto our sketch here. So, I've got my circle. I want to make another small circle overlapping. I can just edit, copy, edit, paste, hold down shift, very important because it constrains the sides, make it smaller, then take that from the center point, drag it, and see it snaps. I want the center point to be outside, which is about there. Now you see the difference between these two is because we've got different um, variable widths. So I'll take this now, change it to how it was before, we see it looking the same, which is great. This is a bit too short, that's fine. I just take the middle bit and drag it out. Not a problem. Now, what do we do about that circle at the top? Very simple. We take ellipse, draw a small one, and we're leaving everything as standard. Fill, black. Okay. Then we can zoom in. And I'm using um, Command Plus. I take the center, and you see there, it snaps to the center. So we have, there we are. We can take the same guy, but we can just move it so it snaps to the in line with the center there. Copy, paste, same commands as anything. Take it down to about there. But we want to make that variable width with a hollow center and let's add some stroke. Two stroke, it's about right. So to get this line coming off there, we just take this. So command C, command V. Once again, on a Mac, slightly different um, commands. And I can just take this and it sort of snaps to the center. If you're having trouble, you can zoom in. It's a bit too wide, not a problem. Take stroke down to two, and it's looking about right. So, have we got these guys at the end? Once again, take one of these guys, copy, and paste. Hold down shift, draw them out, make them a bit bigger. Move him. So the center point lines up. Take him. And by the way, you'll see here that the end point is where the line starts. So we're going to zoom in, so Command Plus or Control Plus if you're on Windows. And I just take this and I can fill it with white. So that means that even though it, technically the line doesn't start until whilst the line starts in the middle, because it's white, you won't see it. And that means you have to fuss around moving things. So, copy that, paste in, take center, and you're just snapping it there, leave it there. Take the line, copy, paste, and just shrink in, taking these middle bits, leaving right in, center, take that right to the edge. Take this. Now that's already white, that's fine. So, what we do is we take the path. Now, this is where it helps you keep in mind which part of your um, illustration is what. So, renaming them is always good. Um, we found it there. We move him below, and there it is. So, we're getting there slowly. The only thing missing are these lines with the arrows. So if I take 
a line. I think actually a more important way, useful way of doing this is you, know, you can take the line tool and you can try and create a sort of triangle thing there, triangle thing there. It might look cool. A better way of doing it is the pen tool. So I take my line, just start to get over here. Let's click that. Take the pen and I'll say start here, draw a line to there and then out again. So that is, if I zoom in, we have, make this window bigger as well, there we have a line. Now we can edit that line in different ways. We can use the convert anchor point tool to click on there we can drag it and it turns into an arc. And we'll do another video on this later on, but we're doing just the basic straight lines here. Um, as it turns out, we're not bothered about any of the bits, so we can just take this, add some stroke, take the variation, so it starts thin, goes thicker and thin, and there we have it. We have done, turned that into an arrow. Um, is that the same as the arrow in our sketch? Pretty much. Um, it should be a bit smaller, so we can take that, control, strain it, there we have it. Now if we zoom in, we can see that we um, aligned it quite right, that is fine. Just take this, move it, and now that's in the right place. Zoom out, move along, copy this, paste it, and we're going to put it in line. Again, it snaps. And that's too small, so I'm going to do that. I'm just doing this really by eye, and that's completely fine. So there's one. Copy, paste, move him to there. Being too much bigger. And there we have it. So you can see that. I have now recreated live this image at the top here. Then we go to view and um, fit artboard in window. Makes window as big as possible. Then control plus zooming in. So you can see what we've created. Now, this may not be the kind of logo that you're looking to create, but it's a I think relatively attractive logo, it's simplistic. You can put this in different formats. So we've now created that. What's left to do now is to use it. So file, save. I'm going to save it on the desktop because I can. I'm going to call it sketch of logo. Right. You get these options coming up and I'm going to keep it as Adobe CS6. If you're giving this file to somebody with an older version of Adobe, you've got to select their version. It goes right down to Illustrator 3, which is very old. But CS5, CS4, but CS6 is probably gonna be fine. If you've got Creative Cloud, you're even luckier. So, okay. And then that's the save file. I want to make it in a JPEG. So file, um, save as, well you can use export and you can select the file type, so PNG is always good. There we are. And then we've got the options here, what resolution we want. Um, I'm going to keep it 300 because I quite like that. And don't really worry about everything else, it's, it's fine for now. But the background I'm going to put as transparent. Okay. So now that's done, I'm going to go to my desktop, or make a new desktop. And we have here... Let's get to the logo. Now the background, you'll notice here that the background is transparent. Because we filled these bits in, they are transparent. So be aware that this, if puts onto a colour background now, you'll get two white dots there. So you might want to consider actually moving in that line to the edge of the circle, which is a, it's not hard, it's just a little bit extra work, um, but it is worth it. Anyhow, what you can do now, 
is if we open up a program such as um, InDesign, which is a program every designer should love with absolute passion. Okay, so we're going to create a new document. It doesn't actually matter what we're doing here. Click OK. I'm going to find a image. So let's have a look what I can find on Google. Um, Google Images. And I'm going to think of something really nice, such as happiness. Because everyone likes happiness. So there we are. Um, that's a cool image. So view image, right click, save to download. That's cool. So I can now file, sorry, since file select is file place, go to my downloads. That's the one I just had. And just chuck it into there. Okay. I'm doing the same kind of logic. I can now go file place and go to desktop. On the desktop we have our InDesign file, open, and just draw it out in place. Okay, and this is obviously on completely on the fly. Nothing's planned out, but you can see that that is the InDesign file itself. That is um, what we were creating. If you were to then go back to that InDesign file, the .ai file edit that, then reopen your InDesign file, the logo will have changed to make your new designs. And that's a really great thing because you don't need to keep bouncing it down to a static image file, such as PNG, and pushing that into your work. You can keep the entire document as active. Which when you're doing one thing isn't so important, when you're doing lots of things it's very important. So that is, in really short terms, how to create a simple logo using very simple tools in InDesign and import, sorry, in Illustrator and import it into InDesign. In later videos, we'll look at how to create more advanced logos such as curves and shapes, how to trace figures, how to do wonderful things. But that's what I think is the most fundamental lesson in Illustrator.